Welcome to Guitar Gavel, a place for people who love guitars. These are conversations with musicians, guitar enthusiasts, techs, and collectors about their guitar journey and their love of the instrument. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, and be sure to sign up for our twice weekly newsletter at guitargavel.com. Everybody. Welcome to the Guitar Gavel Podcast. I am your host, David Still, and we've got a special episode today with my new friend, Lawman Mike. But for those of you that are YouTube guitar hounds, you definitely know Lawman Mike from his amazing database and catalog of guitar videos, which we will talk about, and from his website, lawmanguitars.com. Uh, myself and Mike have connected on LinkedIn. It's a recurring theme through these podcasts. There's such a wonderful guitar community on LinkedIn, so it's just hard not to, to venture away from it. But I'm in North Carolina. Lawman Mike is joining us from Iowa, where it's super cold, or if it's not, it is about to be as we are here in the middle of December. Lawman Mike, thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, happy to be here. Happy to talk about guitars anytime, David. So uh, thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Well, we will we will talk a lot about guitars um, and, we'll, and we'll jump right in. I, I will kind of reiterate uh, to the audience that any of the links that uh, Mike and myself talk about now, I will, the text is posted in the description of the podcast, whether you're listening it to it listening to it via audio or watching on YouTube. So you can click through and link to anything, any of Lawman Mike's uh, social channels. And certainly his YouTube channel is fantastic. So I can't wait to talk about that with Lawman Mike here in a minute. But tell us, everyone's kind of beginning the origins of their guitar story. What what kind of music were you listening to? What got you started, Lawman? And then what, what was that first guitar? Well, <laughs> it uh, it goes back a long ways, you know. It uh, I've been playing guitars. Let's see now for sixty years, and uh, I started at age ten. So if you can add real fast, you can figure out how old I am. But uh, I wanted to play guitar uh, very badly, and uh, I finally uh, found a guitar in the back of a comic book, and wandered into a guitar uh, shop in uh, Bellevue, Nebraska, where I was living, and uh, my guitar uh, teacher looked at it and said, "Mike, you can't." even tune this where did world did you get this guitar you know so uh, we had to uh, wander into my dad's shoe store and dad had to buy me a k guitar which i still say it's impossible for our kids to learn how to play on some of the guitars we had to learn on back in the day but uh, somehow or another i was able to figure out how to play guitar over the years and uh, learned how to play played with a bunch of bands and uh, i've always uh, been had my finger in guitars some way form or another and uh, uh Getting to uh, how the guitar business came about, I was uh, uh, bought my first uh, home computer. Computers had just come out, and uh, uh, my friend said, "Oh yeah, you gotta have a home computer." And I go, well, "Okay, great." So I got a home computer. And I go now, what do I do with this thing? He goes, "Well, you know, look up stuff." You know, I go, oh, "Okay, get on eBay." I go, oh, "Okay," so I get on eBay and I look up guitars. You know, and I go, "Oh, there's like a billion guitars here. I better narrow this search down." So I look for electric guitars and. Now there's half a billion guitars. <laughs> now they go, well, hey, my first real guitar was a National Studio 66. So I put that in uh, my eBay search and boom, here comes one. I bring my wife over. She goes, hey, look. She goes, oh, yeah, that's cool. What's, what's with that? I go, I think I'm going to try to get this. So I bid on it and, and uh, won. And of course, back in those days, you had to do money orders. They didn't even have PayPal back then. So I get this guitar, you know, and it's just like my first guitar. It's really awesome. I clean it up, put some new strings on it and looking at it, sitting in the family room. My wife goes, uh, what are you going to do with that? And I go, well, I kind of like looking at it. She goes, eh, 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 all right, all right, I get it. So I sell it and I go, oh, I made some money. Uh, maybe I should try that again. So I tried that a couple more times. And finally, my wife says to me one day, she goes, hey, Mike, uh, you know, how many more guitars are you going to buy? to sound familiar guys, uh, who, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, is it a problem, you know, Judy for, she goes, well, it's not a problem, but you know, I kind of budget, you know, it'd be nice to know. I go, I'll tell you what, you will never see another bill on your visa for another guitar, but you can't tell me how many guitars I buy. How's that for a deal? She goes, oh, okay. So Lawman Guitars was born. So I'm buying and selling guitars on eBay and I'm working in Chicago and, and, uh, 
you know, doing a bunch of uh, guitars on the side uh, uh, from my real estate business. And uh, uh, finally, we uh, moved to uh, Des Moines, Iowa, uh, finally got out of Chicago. And uh, I think I brought 14 guitars with me. And that was a lot of guitars for me back then. And, uh, you know, now inventory sits at about 200. So, you know, it's kind of grown from there. But, uh, you know, the... The, the business just kept exploding and uh, you know I discovered videos and I discovered or actually reverb discovered me they uh, uh, searched me out I was uh, selling guitars on eBay and uh, they said hey uh, law man why don't you put some guitars on reverb we got this new thing I go uh, I don't know about that but so I tried it and reverb is great I mean it just it's great for those of you out there who have not experienced reverb reverb it outstanding they not only take great care of me as a seller but they take great care of you as a buyer they're really really awesome i've uh, never had a single problem with reverb over the years and they are just fantastic so uh, so anyway i started putting stuff on reverb and uh you know here we are all of a sudden you know we got all this stuff going on we've got uh you know we got youtube channels and facebook and you know people are calling and writing and it's kind of fun <laughs> it's kind of fun so yeah that's kind of how we got to where we are Lawman did, and, and well, I do want to revisit your guitar lineage, but I, 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 I like where you're at right here. So I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you, you had a, a real estate career when, when you transitioned to, to Des Moines, and clearly, you, you at that point maybe the guitar thing was a side hustle, and you made it a little more formal. Did, were you get, getting out of the real estate industry and into guitar specifically, or were you kind of done? This was a natural transition. It was a nice little thing, and and I mean, I mean, kind of. How did that work? Because you went from being only able to do it on nights and the weekends to sounds like very much a full time gig at this point or very close to it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've always been a, a a seller of things. You know, I uh, I had shoe stores in uh, Colorado Springs. We had uh, three Buster Brown shoe stores back when uh, parents bought uh, nice shoes for their kids and uh, got out of that business and went to work for my uh, uh, landlord, uh, General Growth, and. Uh, uh, started managing shopping centers for imagine a shoe salesman managing shopping malls. So, you know, here I am managing shopping malls. And then they discovered I was still a pretty good salesman. So I started leasing shopping malls. And uh, so uh, I moved from uh, uh, General Growth to a group uh, called JMB, and they later became Urban Retail in Chicago uh, and leased uh, shopping malls for them uh, all over the country. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was, you know, a highly stressful job. It was great to have uh, guitars as uh, something to get my mind off of uh, real estate. Uh, you know, I kind of went from making million dollar deals to uh, selling, you know, a $200 guitar was uh, very satisfying to me. So, uh, so uh, I convinced my company to allow me to open an office in, in uh, Des Moines, which uh, they didn't want me to, to, uh, to quit my job. So I said, okay, look, you know, I'm going to Iowa, you know, I need to, I need to get out of Chicago. This you know, hour and a half commute every day uh, each way is uh, is going to kill me. So, uh, so they said, okay, all right, we'll let you go to Iowa. I was leasing a project down in Branson, Missouri. Uh, we did the uh, 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 shops down in Branson on uh, Lake Taney Como, and uh, so we did. That was my last big project, and uh, so I did that uh, here from Des Moines for a couple of years, and said, okay, I'm going out on top. I'm done. You know, and uh, uh, you know, I was you know, I was selling a lot of guitars, you know, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it was definitely something that was, you know, people said, oh, what a nice hobby. I'm going, no, it's not really a hobby. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yes. I'm working pretty hard for a hobby. You know, I mean, it's a, you know, those of you who know the internet, you know, you're, you're on 24 seven, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, you're answering questions at 10 o'clock at night when you're about ready to go to bed. And uh, so, I mean, it's uh um, it, it's, it's definitely uh, something that's a passion and I've done it since I was 10 years old, but, uh, you know, now it's just something that, uh, you know, I, I was uh, telling someone the other day, I said, you know, when I was, uh, uh, 18, you know, it'd be like, all right, my, my ideal, uh, my ideal would be, you know, I, I want to be in a band. I want to work in a music store and, and, uh, I want to, uh, teach, you know, I want to teach guitar, you know, and now I went through all this over all these years, and now here I am, you know, now I have a band. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a worship pastor at a church here in Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, I teach guitar and uh, voice and bass, and and uh, that way I always have uh, my students, uh, uh, that way you've always got a band, <laughs> you know, they I make them play with me at church, 
and uh, you know, and, I, I, <laughs> and then and then I've got a, I've got my own music store. I'm not even working for somebody. So I mean, it's uh, it's like a dream come true. Uh, it just took me a few years to get here. So uh, kind of full circle for me because you know I was you know when I was in high school, you know I was one of those guys. I didn't play sports. I was always in the music shops. You know, I started teaching guitar when I was 14. I was just one of those guys that just was always in the music shops and. You know, Ron Pushkar said, you know, you're always here anyway. Why don't you start teaching some of the the young kids? They go, okay, great. You know, so, I mean, I did that. I sold guitars. I went to a shop in South Omaha playing in bands. And, uh, you know, it was great. You know, my uh, my family got moved from, from uh, Omaha to uh, Colorado. We moved to Colorado Springs. And, uh, you know, that was a real shock. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I uh, was teaching some guitar there and, and working in the shoe business again. And, uh you know, President Nixon sent me a personal invitation to uh, to join the army. So it wasn't that fun. You know, I got to do that for a couple of years. I even played in a band when I was in the army. How about that? Wow, good for <laughs> you. <laughs> when when you were a teenager and you're you're teaching and you're playing in bands, what um what kind of music were you into at that point? And and what what were some of the guitars that if you I mean what were your favorites at that time or what were you actively playing? Oh, okay. Well, of course, uh, you know, everybody back in the 60s was either a guitar player, a bass player, a drummer, or you played the tambourine and sang. So, you know, I decided I was going to be the guitar player. So, I mean, I started playing in bands. Goodness, I think I was probably 12 or 13 when I was playing in my first band, you know, in, in school auditoriums and, and all that. And uh, so we played rock and roll. You know, we played all the top uh, songs that we heard on the on AM radio and uh you know, back then we didn't have YouTube to learn how to play songs. We had to use the record player. And, you know, that's how you get your ear. You know, people say, oh, you got a really good ear. I go, well, you know, I, that's how you learn songs back then. You had to figure them out. You know, it, uh, you know you'd get music books. Say, oh, look at here, here's a music book. It's like, those aren't the right chords. You know, so, you know, you had to figure it out. And, uh, but yeah, we played, uh, uh, you know, back then, let's see, what did I play? I had, uh, uh, some box equipment. I had a Jordan amplifier, like the association, the association uh, band play the associate uh, Jordan uh, amplifier. So I had to have a Jordan one time. I think I had a Fender one time. Um, I've still got my Strat from that I played back then. And I had a 335 and a classical guitar. And, you know, I, I've had a bunch of guitars come and go. My very first electric guitar uh, was a national. I think I mentioned that. And then uh, my instructor said, nah, you know, we need to get you a really nice guitar. So we went to a pawn shop and found a, a Gibson ES-125 thin line with dual pickups. You know, I've been looking for one of those, but I'm not prepared to spend $3,000 on one. <laughs> the one the pawn shop cost me 100 So it's like, you know, it's a little bit different today. <laughs> it is. Probably prospered from that myself, you know. <laughs> Um, did, I mean, I get, wow. It sounds like you played a lot then, you know, by the time you were 18, it sounds like you probably played a, a, a couple of handfuls of different guitars. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I had quite a few guitars back then. It, uh, I mean, I've always been a Gibson and Fender player. I mean, I, uh, uh, didn't really have any of the house brand guitars, you know, that I love. I mean, I love silver tones and, and harmonies and, and all those. And that's really how I started uh, my eBay business was, uh, buying and selling, you know, the, the guitars, I'd buy them for a hundred and fix them up and sell them for two. It was great. You know, now you got to buy them for, you know, a thousand and sell them for hopefully 1500. So, yeah. you know, the prices of those guitars have, uh, have really escalated. I've told people over the years, I say, don't put your money in, in the bank, buy vintage guitars. I'm telling you, you'll make more money. And, uh, you know, so a lot of people have done that. Myself, yeah, I mean, on that note, I mean, kind of on the, on the business side of things, COVID put really escalated prices. I mean, significantly so on the used market. Not, I mean, whether vintage or not, uh, are you, are you seeing that relax at all? Or are we, you know, plateaued or is the trajectory still up with pricing? And yeah, I mean, I was prepared to shut down lawman guitars. I, I didn't think anybody was going to have anything to do with guitars through that period when everything just shut down. Uh, and I was shocked. I mean, it was, it, I had the best year ever, and you hate to say that. I mean, with with all the people that are losing their jobs and all the, the the terrible things going on with that horrible, horrible disease that still affects us. I mean, you know, but people stayed home, and, and if they're staying home, they want to do stuff, and and uh, 
you know, you get tired of video games, you know, I think I need to play a guitar. So, I mean, it was an incredible, incredible experience to, to uh, go through that and see how many guitars we sold during that time. I mean, it was like, I couldn't hardly keep up. I mean, it was just, we sold a ton of guitars uh, through that. Um, as far as, as pricing goes, uh, I really haven't, I haven't seen that stop, quite frankly. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still constantly surprised. I mean, I, I research every guitar I get before I, I list it. It's like, well, I had one of those two years ago. I look at what it was selling for two years ago. I can't sell it for that now. You know, and here's what they're selling for. I mean, it just, it's amazing that uh, the escalation in prices, I mean, you know, part of it is, you know, everything is more expensive, but vintage guitars, I'm telling you, they're just, there's still so much demand. I mean, you, you, you wonder, you know, is that ever going to come to an end? I mean, or, you know, it's not just old guys buying vintage guitars. I mean, the, you know, I can't tell you how many young guys, said, oh man, when I discovered vintage guitars, it's like, that's a whole new world. I go, welcome, you know, welcome <laughs> to, to yes. the great world of vintage guitars. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, there's nice new guitars, but I mean, boy, you put your hands on a vintage Gibson or a Martin or something, you go, oh, this is what guitars are all about, you know? So, yeah, so, vintage is the way to go. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. Yes, and I, I you know, my, my thoughts on that, since you didn't ask, I could see it being a little cyclical. I mean, I, I, I think it's got to max out and maybe hold and maybe dip a little bit, but I think the trajectory, you know, the, the overall trend is upwards and onwards um, in that it, it, even if there was a stall in pricing, however long that may last, it will it will go back up at some point in time um, well, or continue. I mean, and there's 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 a lot of different types of vintage guitars. I mean, I remember back in uh, the go go '90s when uh, people were were buying Les Pauls and paying you know quarter of a million dollars for a Les Paul, and and it's like people said, "Are you going to do that?" It's like, no, I'm not. I mean, these are guitars. I mean, you know, they're not. They're not commodities. I mean, it's not like dealing in gold and, and silver. I mean, and, and 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 barrels of oil. This is a guitar, and I'm not going to pay you know that kind of money for guitars. And and you know, I, I can't say that I predicted it, but I was not surprised to see that crash. And and yeah. that has never recovered to that that volume yet that I'm aware of, unless I've missed it. Um, you know, it just I have never gotten into that. You know, I mean, I, I kind of set a limit as to where I'm comfortable. You know, it's like, you know, if I buy one quarter of a million dollar guitar, that's my whole open to buy. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's no, I'm not going to do that. You know, right. I'm very happy selling guitars. I think the most expensive guitar I ever bought uh, was a, a Gibson uh, Southern Jumbo. Uh, and it was it was fabulous. I mean, this was a fabulous it was 1953 or 52. I forget what year it was. And uh, I put that thing out at $10,000. And it was like, I said, no one is ever going to pay me that. And people started making uh, offers of it. I'll give you six for it, law man. I'll give you seven for it. Like, no, it's a $10,000 guitar. And finally, someone said, I'll take it. I went, great. And I was kind of relieved, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it, it's like it's a lot of dough. I mean, it's like, it you know, I mean, it's a lot of dough for guitar. I mean, I, you know, I have, you know, guitars that sell for five and six, and that makes me nervous enough, you know, I mean, just, uh, you know, but I'll tell you, I love that guitar, and it's it's kind of my philosophy, uh, you know, I keep going around a little bit here uh, with you, uh, stop me if I, if I go a wrong direction, but uh, I never buy a guitar just uh, to sell it, you know, that that's never my goal. Uh, I always have to like the guitar, I have to be able to uh, get it to play great, uh, and I have to personally like that guitar before I'll sell it because I just don't believe in buying guitars to sell guitars. That's not what we're doing. Here. I mean, it's yeah. every guitar here, if it doesn't sell, no problem. I'm happy to play that guitar. I may have a lot of guitars to play, but, you know, I mean, you know, every guitar here is handpicked by me and, and uh, they don't leave here unless I love them. So uh, that's just, you know, I'm not well, a guitar well seller. Long man, I can re I can really sense that and tell that from your videos. You, you're cur you're curating your store and you're and you're picking the guitars like you just said that you like and that you would want to play, and not just to sell guitars, but but you ooze that in your in your videos really and truly through your personality and as you 
as you describe and talk about and as you've researched and kind of, you know, maybe fallen in love with half the ones that you're, we're seeing a video about, um, you know, and I can see where you'd be okay. Maybe if it didn't sell, I don't know about your wife, but you, you, you would be okay. I um, mean, I think that's a, that's, that's where the heart is. And I think, you know, you just got to fo follow that and it all works, but I do believe you use that when you're, when you're talking. Well, thank about you. It. Thank you. It, you know, the videos are great. I mean, I, I, I've been doing videos now for, oh goodness, I don't know, 10 years, maybe 15. I, I, I forget. We've got, we've got 6,600 subscribers and we've got over 500 videos. I think we tried to figure out how long ago we started doing this. And, and I've, I've been through two studios, uh, uh, one only because he went into a different business. He said, well, man, I'm really sorry. I went, oh no, we're, ha we're getting a divorce. You know, I've been <laughs> with the, uh, uh, with Steve for years, and he says, "Well, I, yeah, we are." And uh, so uh, I was happy to find uh, Golden Bear uh, uh, Studios uh, here in Des Moines to, to pick up the ball and and uh, and run with it. But uh, you know, the, the demos are great. I mean, I I love doing them, and when people respond, it just it it you know it just makes me so happy because I, I just love doing them. It's it's really just me selling guitars to you. I mean, it's like I, I look at a camera and I don't think about a camera. I think about the guy sitting there going, that's exactly what I want. I want to hear how it sounds. I want to hear how it plays. Look how nice it plays. And look at that case. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and, you know, and that's, it's like you're sitting in front of me and that that's always how I've tried to do it. And, uh, and, you know, enthusiasm is, is easy. If you, if you love your guitar, you know, it's like, if it's just a guitar, you're going, okay, well, here's what we got today. You know, it's like, no, that's not what we're going to do. So, yeah. And, you know, I, I pick out the five, most recent and i must admit the most expensive guitars that i've recently got only because it does cost money to do these videos you know it's not like uh, <laughs> I, I, I get the uh, golden bear records uh, studio time for free and it's not how that works you know i uh, i have an investment uh, with them every month but uh, it's a blast to do it and uh, and brian my producer uh, uh give a shout out to brian vanderpool you know he does an unbelievable job he not only does my demos, but he does my records for me too, uh, which maybe you'll ask about here a little I, later. I uh, will. I'm sorry. <laughs> we haven't made it there. We're going to get there. <laughs> good, good, good. But anyway, uh, you know, it's it, he loves it too because I show up with these guitars, and he's he's a guitar player himself, and uh, he's he and his wife have a band called the Well Pennies, and uh, and he goes, oh, what did you bring me this month? You know, so he's just as excited as I am to do them. So. It's really fun. I mean, I, I have to say I look forward to demo day every month. So, yeah. Well, I want to provide a little context for, for those that are listening or watching that, that may be unfamiliar with you. And, and I'll give it in the historical context. So um, many of, of folks that have seen my podcast before or follow anything that I do and write about know that I like to write, <clears throat> provide historical context about guitars, like the story behind either a specific guitar or a model of guitar um, is very fascinating to me. And you do both, depending on how it's applicable in the guitar that you are reviewing or demoing for someone to buy from your store. And it's a real treasure trove of historical information that's available to watch. And if, if you don't, even if it's a guitar you may not be interested in, not you, I'm talking about someone watching, they're going to learn, I guarantee them they will learn something new by watching your video within four minutes. Cause most of your historical information is up front in the first half. We've talked about your videos are about 10 minutes in length and you give a wonderful demo with some different tones. So you explain the settings um, and then the case at the end. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful formula, but I love the fact that there really is just a, a remarkable database of this historical guitar information that is not necessarily readily available or certainly not available in a video form. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for, for saying that. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, I get a lot of people say, oh, you know so much about guitars. I hear, well, I know stuff, but quite honestly, I research a lot. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've got a lot of sources and I've got a lot of uh, people I can call and I've got a lot of books and I've, I use the internet constantly. Uh, but, you know, trying to dig out the, all the, the little facts about these guitars, because first of all, it's just interesting. And they're historical. I mean, a lot of these guitars are historical. I mean, I've got guitars from the, the 20s and 30s and 40s and, and uh, 
those are really hard to uh, to get uh, data on. But uh, you know, they all have clues, and you use those clues to try to draw some conclusions to the guitars. But uh, you know, there, there's a lot of really good information out there, and uh, people will say, how, "Well, man, how much did I sell this guitar for?" It's like <laughs> you have to do research. You don't just say, "Oh, it's a $500 guitar." You don't you just don't do that. You know, you have to figure out what's going on and have the right parts, have the right case, you know, how's it play, you know. So all those things go into pricing out a guitar that uh, most people don't understand, you know. So I try to explain that. Well, you, you mentioned books. And it's a question I have that I want to ask. Do you, if if you can recall any off the top of your head, if not, you can shoot me in an email and I'll I'll link it into the, to the text of the podcast. Do you have a favorite um guitar history book or a favorite guitar book, or that can be, you know, that could be plural. I would love to jot them down and include that for everyone. Well, you know, please, uh, you know, I'll send you the, the, the formal names and you can, you can okay. put them down, but uh, there's a, a book about uh, all the Japanese uh, guitars that I use constantly because we sell a ton of these 1960s and 70s uh, Japan guitars. A lot of them are uh, uh, lawsuit guitars, they call them, which, uh, basically uh, some of them were sued by Gibson uh, which became the lawsuit but you know a lot of them recall that because you know they have ones that looks like strats ones that look like uh, tellies and ones that looks like uh, you know Gibsons and uh, but uh, a lot of really really quality guitars that came out of Japan back in the 60s and 70s and someone put out a book and it is it is like my bible for for those uh, uh, those guitars because I go through and it tells me who the manufacturer is for them and uh, gives me history on the factories that I can share with people and uh, yeah, there's just a ton of information there. That's that's number one. Is number that the two, book by by Frank Myers, the history of Jap Japanese guitars? Thin, I mean, a paperback. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll confirm that with you later. Okay, that's on my shelf. And I hope that he's going to be a guest on the very next podcast after this one, to be honest. Oh, that's I'm awesome. Well, really please thank yeah. him from Lawman Mike that he uses it religiously. I so will. That's probably the book. But uh, then there's another one. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but uh, I'm probably the biggest seller of uh, vintage cowboy guitars in the country. Uh I was denied as a child a cowboy guitar. Now, the cowboy guitars are these guitars, most of them made by Harmony uh, back in the 50s and 60s. And they took a, a little Stella or a, a three-quarter size guitar, and they put these cowboy uh, graphics on them. They, they, they actually applied them on the guitar, and they sold them. And every kid in the country wanted one. And I always asked for one. And did I get one? No, I got socks and underwear. But so <laughs> to make up for lost time, you know, if you saw my shop, it's lined in cowboy guitars and uh, they're not expensive guitars. You know, I mean, I, I typically buy them, you know, all busted up and broken for a hundred dollars and completely redo them, redo the necks and everything and, and uh, put all the right parts on them if they don't have that. And, uh, you know, they're not expensive even when I'm done with them. You know, they, most of them will sell around five, six hundred dollars when we're all done, but they are so cool and people you know, not only can you play them, but they have these beautiful graphics, you know, on them that you can hang on your wall and they're just, they're fabulous. I mean, they're just, they're, they're so historic and so cool and I just love them. And there is a book on every cowboy guitar. Uh, someone did all this research. It's also a paperback and I can't tell you the, who, who does it, but I call it my cowboy guitar book. And uh, every time I get a cowboy guitar, I go through there and I'll tell you what, there's only been maybe one or two exceptions that I haven't been able to find the guitar in there, uh, yeah. that they have every single one of them. And it is my second Bible of guitars. And uh, so a lot of my inspiration I get from that. And uh, it, it's it's a great, great resource. I'll give you that name here a little bit later. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe almost the last question, since we're still uh, talking about your business a little bit. The, the setup and repair work that's done, do you, do you do some of that? Do you sub that out? Do you have a guy that, I say a guy, guy or gal that, you know, is your go-to that or is in-house? I'm, I'm curious because I know you do a ton of work or oftentimes do a lot of work to many of the guitars you get to make them ship, you know, ship shape. So, well, no, I, I, I you know, I, I, I always tell people that uh, they say, oh, well, you work on my guitar. And I, no, <laughs> no. 
uh, I am the chief cleaner. Okay, <laughs> guitars come in here, you know, and and nine times out of ten, you know, they've been in a barn, they've been in a basement, they've been in someone's closet. They're just awful. You know, they they just look terrible. And uh, you know, I look at them, and and most people would go, you know, you got to be kidding me. We need to put that in the garbage. It's like, no, no, no. Wait till I'm done with it. So, you know, I take them, I mean, what I do is, is I, I detail these guitars. That's, that's what I do. I'm a detailer. I take all the parts off, you know, and uh, if they're missing parts, uh, if you saw my shop, it's filled with all these little bins and, and little boxes and stuff filled with harmony parts and silver tone parts and, and Gibson parts and Cluson parts and all these parts that I know I'm going to need for guitars that we buy. And so I make sure I get all the parts assembled. If I doesn't have the right part, I make sure it does have the right part. Can't tell you how many times people have replaced a broken tuner with these crappy tuners that they put on this vintage guitar, throw those things away and put the right tuners on it. And uh, so I get it all cleaned up. I get all the parts assembled. I put it in a little plastic bag with the strings. And uh, a lot of times, you know, the cases, uh, I also do a lot of work on the cases with my glue gun and cardboard. I mean, I try to preserve these cases as much as possible. They are just as historic as the guitars. And if they don't have the case, if you saw my case room, you would see, you know, probably 400 cases in there of, of vintage cases that are there for guitars that I plan uh, to show up in the, the shop someday. And from there, I've got, let's see, one, two, I've, probably got five guys that that do work for me they they don't work for me they're uh you know they do work and and i pay them to to do the work on the guitar for me uh but uh, everyone hears me talk about jeff the tech jeff the tech's been with me you know since day one i i found jeff and he's unbelievable he's worked on every kind of guitar you can imagine you know from a from a stella that sells you know for two hundred dollars to a, a ten thousand dollar gibson and he's just worked on virtually every guitar we have in here. And uh, Jeff is awesome. And uh, he does most of the work for us. He comes in once a week, picks up the guitars, off he goes and brings back the guitars. He's incredible. Like in a week, he brings all these guitars back. And, you know, very seldom is it like, oh, that one needed a little extra, you know, something. And I go, well, that's fine, Jeff. You know, I mean, you're doing great. So, you know, I have guys that, that do work for me. And uh, so uh, uh, I clean, I mar market, I buy, I sell, I pack, I do everything except setups and, and fixing things. You know, I got guys that have more patience than I do for fixing. Got it. Got it. Okay, perfect. Good to know that. I can, I can kind of envision as you're telling me this, though Jeff sounds like a wonderful person, that maybe you've handed him something and he did this. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh come on, Mike. Come on, not that. Go oh, no. <laughs> he loves you most of the time, but he still hates you on some days. I'm sure. Well, I will. I will tell you. And, and people ask all the time. They go, well, what? What if there's a guitar? I go, look. There are guitars that you just have to give up on. Let's face it. You know, there are guitars that actually should be in the garbage. You know, and and it takes a lot for me to get there, but it it does happen. And they become parts donors. I mean, that's how I assemble all my parts. You know, I mean, I pull parts off guitars. And if the neck is just beyond help or it's just a very inexpensive guitar and happen to have some good parts on it, you know, they get shown the, the, to the curb. Uh, but that's very seldom. But it, it does happen, you know. And I, I have bought guitars knowing whole well that, that they had a set of tuners I wanted or it had a case I wanted or a tailpiece I wanted. But I know the rest of the guitar is just not worth it. So sure. I buy a guitar for parts. You know, that, that has happened. And I've even bought a guitar for a case. I, I'll see that a, a case that I that I wanted for a guitar. And here's here's a guitar sitting in there that does not belong in that case. But I'll buy that guitar. And, uh, okay, let's do a little switch here. <laughs> that Gibson goes in that case. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing wrong with that. Okay. So I'm going to switch gears on us, if you don't mind. Because... I did want to kind of re revisit your, your, your guitar story, but thank you for all this fascinating information. We, sure. we could just, you know, a whole separate podcast just on, on what we were talking about. Um, so we're going to, we're going to journey back in time, uh, early twenties ish. Let's, let's say where are you at in your, your guitar journey at that point? And, and at, I mean, at this point, it sounds like you've already come across some pretty amazing guitars, but amazing guitars in your twenties, 
were you playing in a band or were you, you know, getting married and starting a family? What, what did it look like back then? Did you really say the twenties? I'm not that well, old. No. I mean, <laughs> in your twenties. Oh, in my twenties. Yes. Oh, okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was gonna say, wow. You're, you're about to walk, get up and walk out. No, Do no, you were in the twenties. It takes a lot to insult lawman, Mike. Uh, but you came close. Um, <laughs> all right, in my twenties. Okay, uh, uh, you know, I, I was uh, recently uh, out of uh, out of the army. Uh, you know, I was. Uh, 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 my family and I had started opening shoe stores. Uh, I had decided at that point that uh, there are a lot better guitar players out there than myself. And it's like, it's time to make a decision. It's, you know, and I've always been a guitar player. You know, that's what I did. I, I thought I was a pretty hot guitar player. You know, that's what I'm going to do the rest of my life. And, you know, I'm sitting there seeing guys sitting in the park, you know, living in pup tents that are, you know, blasting away on guitars. I'm going, oh, he's really good. I don't want to live in a pup tent. You know, so I, I made a conscious decision that guitars were going to be a not, I kind of backed away from it, quite honestly. I mean, I went into business, you know, I, I had shoe stores, I went into the real estate business. Um, I always had guitars around me. You know, my wife was always patient, let me strum a few Beatles songs for her on Sunday afternoon. So I, you know, I was able to, to keep uh, some guitar going, uh, you know, that way. Uh, I guess when I was in the Springs, uh, I did play in a gospel group one time. Yeah, come to think of it, I did play with a gospel group. And uh, we even got to record an album at uh, the Gaither Studios. You know, that was pretty exciting for that's, a young Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah. And then, you know, I really wasn't doing guitars. I mean, it just, you know, it wasn't, you know, it's like my lost period. And people say, well, you know, these great guitars in the 80s, I'm going, you know, I wasn't really into guitars right then. So there there was a big gap. You know, I, I always continued to play. I kept guitars from my, my childhood, I'm happy to say. Uh, you know, I, I, I kept dragging them around as we moved around the country and, and uh, uh, happy that I still have them. They're, they bring back lots of memories for me. But, uh, you know, there, there was a point where, no, I, I was definitely uh, uh, charging uh, ahead, full steam ahead in, in business and left guitar behind. Sure. When, when you kind of, uh, got back into guitars, let's say, I mean, did, what, did you ease in or did a light bulb go off or the itch come back and you're like, all right, I'm, I'm back. Well, you know, I was selling a few guitars and it was, you know, it wasn't even hardly a hobby, you know, I mean, I would sell a guitar, you know, maybe once a month or once every other month. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was thinking about guitars a lot. I was actually asked, uh, surprisingly, and it's kind of an interesting story. And I think about it when we were living in the Chicagoland area, we started going to this church and, uh, this, this, uh, lady who is, uh, going to marry our uh, assistant pastor says, you play guitar, don't you, Mike? And I said, yeah, she goes, you know, I was trying to find somebody that could play this song for our wedding. Would you do that? And, and, uh, Tom was mortified. He goes, we just, barely met Mike and you're asking him to play at your wedding. And I go, give me the song. I could probably figure it out. So she gives me this song and I go, yeah, that's easy enough. So I, yeah, I could play that song. So I did that. And of course, you know, I'm in their church playing guitar. So the piano player goes, Mike, would you bring your guitar and play a little bit? I go, oh, sure. Okay. So I'm playing, you know, in the church there. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I was starting to play a little bit more again, you know, and, and a little more regularly. And uh, when we came to uh, Des Moines, I mean, we were looking for a new church and, and you know, I, quite honestly, I, I, I jumped into a church and, and immediately said, you know, the Lord wants me to play guitar. You know, that's all there is to it. I need to be playing guitar. So I joined the worship team and, of course, you know, through a few attritions of people, you know, I'm back there playing bass, minding my own business, you know, and all of a sudden the leader is gone. Everyone's looking at me going, we want you to lead us, Mike. I'm going. I'm the bass player. What are you talking about? You know, so I had to teach someone how to play bass really quick, you know, so I could get on guitar so I could uh, lead the, the church in, uh, in worship. So, uh, so it's become a steady gig for me. And I must, I must say, you know, playing guitar every week at church uh, certainly uh, uh, has enabled me to, uh, to take my, uh, my feeble guitar attempts back in the, in the day where I was playing rock and roll uh, to a whole different level. And, uh, you know, now I'm recording songs and writing songs and teaching again. And it, it's quite a blessing to have guitar in my life. That's for sure. 
well, you're you're quite you're really a, a very good player, and in so what I'm seeing in the videos when you're playing, I mean, is that have you gotten a lot better? Let's say the last 15 years, or so, uh, clearly you're a very good player as well when you were a teenager. Um, what am I seeing a carryover muscle memory or a lot of muscle memory from when you were 17 or 18, or have you, have you worked really hard to, to be where you're at now in the last? You know, I think it's more repetition, David, more than anything. I mean, it, uh, and you know, I've had people say, you know, your playing has really gotten a lot better, Mike. I'm going, <laughs> I've just seen the good videos. so bad before, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think as you, as you play and, you know, I mean, let's face it. I mean, I, I'm a guitar player now. I mean, before I was like a businessman that played a little guitar. I, I'm I'm a musician, you know. I mean, I, I write songs. I've got a church that I that I depends on me to to do music for them every week, and and I've got uh, people depending on me to to show them videos every month. And you know, I mean, it's it's not like I'm practicing all the time. But let's face it, if you're if you're playing regularly, uh, and you know, and you hear stuff and you try a few things, and you go, oh, that's kind of a cool song. And you know, I'm I'm not working on new songs all the time. Uh, I'll tell you that, but, uh, you know, just stuff that you've heard comes back to you, you know, and as you play something, you go, oh, yeah, you know, and so, I don't know, I, I guess I've always had a really good ear, and, you know, I, I was taught by a jazz guy, I will tell you that, you know, I, I was taught by uh, um, Ron Pushkar, who studied with Johnny Smith, um, okay. and, uh, you know, so, I mean, you know, he, he focused a lot on technique, and, you know, so I've got, you know, pretty good technique, uh, you know, I will say, uh, and I think I would like to think that carries over into my playing. But, you know, when I'm demoing guitars, it seems like most people want to hear some rock and some blues. And that's typically what I'm playing unless I've got a jazz guitar and I play a little jazz. And, you know, I got a classical guitar. I'll hammer out classical gas or something. You know, I mean, I'm not a <laughs> classical guitar player at all. But, uh, you know, it, it's I'm pretty versatile. Let me put it that way. At least I try to be. Well, so your your story is very fascinating because there was the the early love, then it's into business and family and having a career, and then your full circle um, later in life. And so you've now also not just now, but in the last however many years, tell tells us about you've recorded a few albums, and it sounds like you you've got uh, you're finishing up a song for for hopefully another one. But how did that come about? And 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 I would love to hear your take in that process and in. I don't know. Do you have another 10 albums in you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one started out with, you know, I'm getting a little older. You know, it might be kind of nice to to record some of these songs. And, uh, you know, I'd written a couple songs. Uh, you know, I, I, I co-wrote with uh, one of our players at church. And, uh, um, and uh, we, uh, you know, we wrote some songs. And I said, you know, it might be kind of nice to record these. And, and uh, so we did that. And that, that was a number of years ago. I mean, it was... Uh, quite a while ago. Uh, and then uh, the, the second one I, I did just, uh, I guess that was oh, two or three years ago. And uh, I did that at Golden Bear Studios where, where I do my demos now. And, and Brian is just fantastic. I mean, I just, uh, he's recording people from all over the country. I mean, they're all coming to Des Moines, Iowa to record with the Golden Bear Studios. I mean, we are really blessed to have him here. Um, but uh, so, you know, I had some more songs and, and, uh, I redid one. I wasn't really quite happy with how it was on the first album. I said, hey, can we re record those songs? He goes, no, oh, let's just, you know, you know, let's redo them on your new album. I go, oh, okay, we'll do a new album. So, you know, I wrote some more music and, and uh, put them on there. And I put a lot of songs that we do at our church. I mean, you know, these are, these are all uh, praise uh, songs that, uh, that are on uh, these albums. You know, they're, they're, they're praising Jesus is what, uh, what I sing about. And, uh, and then uh, we did this uh, other one just last year. And uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're writing music and got some more songs for another record that we're going to be doing in uh, in February. And, you know, people say, we're going to get your music. It's like, you know, first of all, I don't sell my music. You know, it's it's there for the glory of God. You know, I mean, you can find it on Amazon and Spotify and all sorts of places. So just look for Michael Law. And uh, I'm not the guy who does uh, opera. <laughs> There's two Michael yeah, Law yeah. found out. I, I uh, Googled myself and I go, oh, that's not me. And uh, so anyway, you know, you might have to search a little bit because I think he's probably more popular than I am. But, uh, you know, you can see my, I did some videos of my uh, music. I've got that on my uh, YouTube channel. You can find that if you go to 
uh, Lawman Guitars uh, YouTube. You can see some uh, videos that we did. They're a lot of fun. Um, uh, basically, the songs with the, you can see me playing the instruments and singing and doing all that and, and acting like a real musician. It's really fun. <laughs> I love I love recording. So to answer your question, David, is I have hopefully one more album in me. And, you know, let's see, I'll be, you know, okay. I'm not sure I'm going to have a fifth. And, you know, it's like, I, I plan to have one. We're going to have four. I think, you know, the four long people get tired of me. So, you know, maybe I'll go out on top. <laughs> there you go. No, nothing wrong with that. All right. So back to guitars. And I know you, I know you've got a few that um, are, you know, somewhere around here, around, around you. And, and I would love to, to see what you've got. I think you may have one of your earlier ones that I see a, a, a natural finish strat at some point when we were, before we started recording or, or, or maybe I didn't, but would love to check out a little, yeah, was, you, you know, just that, to, was a, that was a good, you know, that was, you were quick with that one, you know, oh. the, the, uh, <laughs> there's a really a, a good story about this guitar. Here's, here's my strat. Oops. Yeah. Um, this, this guitar has been with me since, um, well, let's see, I was playing in a band when I was uh, 14. So yeah, it, it's, it's been around a long time. Um, this was, uh, this is a, I'm not sure if it's a 60 or 62. Uh, I bought it used and uh, it was Burgundy Mist, believe it or not, at one time. Uh, yeah. People are, are always love to tell me, you know, Mike, you, you probably stripped $5,000 off that guitar. And I said, that's okay. That's, I like it better this way. <laughs> I'm never going to sell it. So yeah. I just got, I just gotten out of the army, uh, David. And uh, uh, if you remember, Eric Clapton was playing a natural colored Strat. And uh, this guitar, when I got it, you know, it was, it was burgundy mist and you can still see some of the burgundy, you know, in, in certain places. I mean, I did this all myself. Um, but I, I, I stripped off the burgundy mist because I hated it. It was all, it was real spotty and you know, it would have been really cool to still have it the way it was now. You know, now that we recognize, you know, those relic finishes or what they're supposed to be like. But, you know, as a dumb kid, so I, I stripped off the finish and couldn't even tell you what I put on it. But it really mellowed into a nice, beautiful color. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've kept this one. There we are. I've kept this one with me over all the years. Um, it's all original except I think that pickup. I had to replace that pickup one time because it went dead on me. Uh, did that in the 70s, I want to say. But, you know, still got the case and every, I've collected different things along the way. I got found a bridge cover and, you know, I've got the whammy bar. And I, you know, it, it's it's almost like a, a piece that, you know, I just like to take it out and hold it once in a while. I really don't play it. You know, I, I just, yeah. you know, I, I don't play it a lot. I take it out, show it to my friends. They love playing it. You know, but it's just, it's oh, one yeah. of those things. It's like, it's just like, it's like that blanket you can't give up. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's a very cool guitar. Uh, someday when Judy has uh, uh, the Lawman Guitars garage sale when I'm gone, you know, hopefully somebody will get it and love it. So, uh, you know, I'm just a caretaker for a while. So, sure, sure. If it, if it one, I've, kept, I've dragged this one around for years. Uh, the only other guitar that, that I've kept. <laughs> This one I actually play on my records. Um, I love this one. I call it Willie. Uh, this is my old classical guitar. Oh, uh, get in there. Uh, uh, there it is. Yeah, this is Willie. Uh, <laughs> Willie is my classical guitar. Uh, it's also from the 60s. I couldn't tell you what year because uh, it's an Oscar Teller from West Germany. And uh, you know, I got this one from uh, the store that I was working at. And I think I paid a whopping $45 for it. But uh, it just sounds wonderful. It's been with me for a long, long, long time. I dragged this one in the Strat around uh, forever. So uh, these are two guitars that uh, I'm happy that I still have and, and uh, actually uh, play this one uh, quite a bit. I play it more like Willie Nelson. I use a pick. <laughs> so I'm not really much of a classical player. So Willie has trigger and you have Willie. I have really, that's true. So the guitars uh, that I that I play, you know, you haven't asked that question. Maybe I'll ask it to myself. Uh, um, you know, well, well, man, Mike, well, you tell me about the guitars that you that you play, actively play. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, uh, again, I'm I'm a worship pastor at a church, and uh, 
you know, I'm, you know, I'm leading and I need to, to hold everybody together. And it's hard to do that uh, playing electric guitar, uh, in my opinion. So I, I'm the strummer, you know, I, I, I keep, uh, keep the band together, uh, strumming the chords and, and uh, using my, my hand signals to tell them what to do. Uh, and they, they follow along very well. I've taught them well. But uh, I've got two Gibsons that I use. I've got Big Red. Uh, Big Red is uh, is my, uh, I forget if it's J45 or J50. It's just one of those. Um, but I went through, I don't know how many new Gibson guitars when I started uh, uh, doing worship. And, you know, I, I would take them and play them and they're beautiful guitars. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure they sounded fine and I'm sure nobody ever noticed, you know, me playing a different guitar and, but I would play it. It's like, you know, that's not really doing it for me. I'd, I'd sell it and go back to the store and try a hummingbird, you know, I played that for a while. I was like, well, that's a nice guitar and it's not really doing it. And I, I went through virtually every model of Gibson acoustic guitar. And finally I said, you know, I've got this great old 63 Gibson guitar. I think I really want to play that. So uh, my shop said, you know what, let's put one of those new LR bags. There it is, one of those new LR bags in there. So we did that. You know, they're great because they don't uh, get away from the integrity of the guitar. There's no holes drilled in your vintage guitars, and they sound wonderful. So, I mean, I play this uh, 1963 uh, uh, Gibson, and uh, everybody that grabs it loves it. it it's just a fabulous guitar, and uh, it gets... Uh, it's actually the guitar that I played on every one of my records. Uh, okay. This is what gets strummed on my records. If you hear a guitar on my records uh, from an acoustic guitar, you're hearing this one. Um, and my producer says, no other guitar sounds like that one. Like that is one end of the sounding guitar on the records. So, so I play this one a lot. And then a very interesting um, development, I got this guitar which is like the sister guitar to Big Red. This is, uh, this is Pale Face, you know, for obvious reasons. But uh, when I got this guitar, um, it was a basket case. I mean, someone had stepped on the guitar. Uh, the bridge was missing, uh, pick bird was missing, the whole top was collapsed. Um, and I finally talked the shop into giving me the guitar uh, for uh, a certain amount of money. And uh, so I, I said, all right, let's see what we can do. So I took it to one of my uh, luthiers. We've got some great, great uh, guitar people here in Des Moines, Iowa. And I said, look, I need a top put on this thing. He said, well, I've never done that before. And I said, well, this is a good one to try. So <laughs> he, bought, he bought this beautiful piece of, uh, of uh, torrified, which means it was baked uh, spruce and uh, built this top for me. And I had to go search out a bridge. I got a bridge, uh, original bridge. And, uh, and uh, he put this top on it and the back and sides are just beautiful. I mean, it was, uh, you know, another, it's either a J45 or 50. And uh, uh, it was such a thin top. Uh, it actually, the, the brace broke one day at church. I came off the, the, the platform and I said, my guitar broke <laughs> right through here. It, the, th the top was so thin when the brace went down, it took the top with it. I took it back to my guy and he goes, oh no. We'll do a new top. I said, no, no, no. I just want you to fix it. Now it's really vintage. There's a crack yeah. in it. That's great. So I fixed my crack. And uh, so this is Pale Face. And uh, it's about the same year. I've got two. They're either 62 or 63 Gibsons. And uh, they're the guitars. I mean, really, guitars, how they sound and feel are more for the player than they are for the person listening. I mean, nine times out of 10, they can't tell you know, the difference in amps and, and all that stuff, you know, they just, they hear music, you know, these are what, they have to sound right to us, you know, this yeah. is, that's how musicians buy guitars, they have to be part of them, and uh, these guitars are part of me, they, uh, they are doing exactly what I want, they sound exactly the way I want them to, and I love them, these are staying with me, these are not for sale, so there you go. That's a good, that is a good place to be. Lawman well, Mike, I love it. I, I'm going to point one thing out with, with, you know, as I'm taking notes and you're talking that I find very interesting for the guy that knows so much. And I'm bragging on your historical database of guitar knowledge. You're unsure if your Strat is a 60 or a 61 and whether you've got a J45 or a 50. And I'm over here <laughs> cracking up to myself. 
And that's fine. You just stay that way, but I'm just pointing it out for the world. I had to, I couldn't help myself. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, I've never, ever said I'm an expert, you know, as, as it's quite <laughs> obvious, it's quite obvious I'm not, but I'm a really good researcher. If someone said, I need to know exactly what year that guitar is. Trust me, I'll figure it out. But you know, it's it's not that important to me. So it's like you know, it, I I looked at it one time and I think we looked it up. I can't remember if it was sixty two or sixty three. So you know, I'm happy you uh, enjoyed that. <laughs> sure, I can I can help myself. Forgive me. Thank you for laughing with me. Um, all right, so <laughs> kind of kind of getting towards the end. This has been a lovely conversation. I, I, I'm curious uh, of so many guitars have come through your hands. And what do you have? I don't know. Just ones that you that you remember that struck you for some reason because they were handsome or they sounded so good, or they literally sang to you that you know that you went ahead and sold. I'm trying to ask you some of your favorites without asking. You know, favorites is a is a loaded term and a trick trick question. But what have been some really fun ones that have come through through your possession over the over the years? Well, I mean. You know, I'm always drawn to uh, Fenders and Gibsons, which, you know, quite frankly, it's because they always sell. I mean, you know, there, there's always a demand for Fender and Gibson guitars. I mean, I, I figured that out a long time ago, you know, just getting the ones that, uh, you know, aren't, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. I don't need to get into that, as we talked about before. Um, I've had, David, quite honestly, so many guitars go through here. I mean, I've had people say, Oh, you remember that guitar I bought? You know, I'm going. That's me. I'm asking no. you. <laughs> <laughs> help me. You know, help me remember that. And I need a few clues. And, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's maybe it's bad to say, but there's just been so many that, you know, they, it, it's almost like a blur. I mean, you know, I've sold thousands of guitars now and, and, you know, I mean, there's been some fabulous guitars, ones I go, boy, I really probably shouldn't have sold that. But do I remember it now? No, you know, yeah. I don't because there's been so many great ones behind it. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it's like, there's always great guitars out there. And I have to say Des Moines, Iowa, you know, for those of you who don't know where Des Moines is, look right in the middle of the country. We're right at the intersection of I-35 and I-80. You know, we are in the, the heart of the, of the United States. And we're, we're right in between uh, Chicago and, and Nashville and Memphis and Omaha, and Kansas City and Minneapolis. We have had guitars come through this area uh, for years from a lot of great, great players and a lot of guitar players. And so it's been great for me. Uh, I've got, you know, people say, how do you find your guitars? I go, well, they find me. I've got finders out there that know what Lawman Mike is looking for. And they go, hey, look what I got today. I go, great, bring it in. You know, great, bring it in, great. Or send it in. I got people all over the country. I got a guy down in, in Virginia that does my uh, my vintage uh, uh, Japanese guitars I was talking about earlier. And, uh, you know, he says, oh, I got five more. You want me to send them up? I go, yep, send them up. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it's it's great. I've got guys that uh, that know the type of guitars I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, they know I'm not going to buy bad guitars you know they haven't you know brought me a well a couple have <laughs> i probably said no i can't buy that one you know but nine times out of ten you know i mean especially if one of my finders is buying it i'll probably try to figure out a way for them to make some money you know so uh, i've got great finders guitars flow through des moines all the time uh i'm in a great place for doing what i do so it's it's a great blessing to be here in des moines that's terrific and <clears throat> when we when we uh get offline here in a second is there any chance i'm going to be able to pry your vintage uh japanese guitar finder pry his phone number off of you but we'll talk about that <laughs> and, yeah i kind of know the answer it's fine long man i i, I knew um well listen I, I think we're at a great great stopping point there there's maybe a couple of things we left on the table but this has just been a wonderful wonderful conversation my face kind of hurts from smiling the whole time. I'm not, I'm not kidding when I say that. We've got to get off so I can, you know, stretch that out there a little bit. But uh, Lawman Mike, thank you so much for your time. I'll make sure that I include every, all the links that we've discussed and, and I'll maybe I'll prod you for an email on a couple of your favorite books. Cause personally I would like, I would like to know what those are so I can get those and then share them with the world. But, but thank you so much for being a guest. I really appreciate happy, it. Happy, happy to be here. Thank you so much for asking me and, uh, I really appreciate your uh, your interest in Lawman Guitars. Thank you so much. Oh, 
My pleasure. My pleasure. Hold on one second. We've got a couple clicks to get us out. Everybody, thank you very much for your time, uh, taking time out of your day or your car ride or whatever it is, or watching this on the big screen in your house on YouTube to, to learn about Lawman Mike and his guitars and his journey. Just really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for the next one, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Guitar Gavel Podcast and a special thanks to Steve Kuykendall for composing this music and being such the great guy and friend that you are. As a reminder, hit the subscribe button and sign up for our twice-weekly newsletter at guitargavel.com.